in the program that you picked up when you came in, there was an extra sheet. And that is a sheet that I passed out uh, to those who attended my full harmonic prayer workshop that was at the end of June. Uh, those of you who were not here, it's an extra gift for you. Those of you who were here, pass it on to somebody else. Um, essentially, okay, the talk tonight, I'm going to go into a little bit more detail on some of the factors that go into um, successful prayer. And the three factors that I've been talking about late, lately are faith, focus, and feeling. And all three of those elements were discussed in Hamid Bey's lesson tonight. He talked about all of those. And these are the factors that I have found after 35 years of really digging in and researching this topic. These are the factors that I found to be the central elements that make prayer work. And as long as you have these elements in some capacity, your prayers will produce results. And if any of these factors are missing, you're fighting an uphill battle. So the first and most important factor is faith. In fact, the reason why the book that I wrote several years ago was called Choose to Believe was because at that point, I was thinking that faith may have been the only factor that was absolutely required. And so if you could develop your faith that your prayers will produce results, that is the single best thing that you can do to increase your prayer power. And the title of the talk tonight is how to unlock your infinite prayer power. And essentially what that means is fine tuning each of these three factors as far as they can go. And what I'm here to share with you tonight is how you can increase your faith, how you can improve your focus, and how you can get that feeling of harmonic resonance with the divine. So that's what I'm here to, to help you with today. Um, as, as she says, I do have a few of those books to give out. Uh, I've got a, well, what I was just going to say is I also brought in a few copies of the book that started this whole idea of harmonic prayer. I wrote this in 2012. I'm working on updating it with some new information, and I do have a few of these to, to give out as well. Um, so we'll get to that as, as we go through. So uh, faith is the most important of the three factors. In fact, if you look on the sheet that I gave you, uh, there's a neat little mathematical formula at the top, which basically shows that your prayer power is equal to the, the product of Focus and feeling multiplied together, but that is taken to the power of faith. And mathematically, whenever something is taken to a power of, that power of is far more important than anything else in the formula. So for those of you who like to play with numbers, who like to play with math, that's for us. For everyone else, you can just kind of ignore that. <laughs> As long as you understand that faith is the most important factor, if you get that one right, the other two don't matter as much. But when you need help increasing your faith, that's where focus and feeling come into play because they work together to help you build your faith in not only prayer, but also in the final results that that prayer is going to produce for you. So, faith. Um, just to make sure that we're absolutely clear and we're talking the same language, I want to define what I see as faith. Some people define it different ways. And when I talk about faith, I'm talking about a mental concept of this is true. I believe this. Faith and belief are very closely related. I have faith that the sun's going to come up again tomorrow. I could also say that I believe the sun will come up again tomorrow. Because those two words can be used interchangeably, that's why I'm saying they're essentially the same thing. I'm not using faith to denote a spiritual energy, which some people do call it that, refer to it that way, and it can be thought of in that way, but that's not the way that I'm using the word here. So. Um, we can talk about faith, we can talk about belief, we can talk about 
uh, knowingness. If I believe something is an absolute that it cannot possibly be false, then I can say that I know that this is true rather than saying I believe this is true. If I say I believe something's true, then there's a little bit of doubt. It may not be true. But if I say I know this is true, it's a 100% strength of belief. Uh, for those of you who have gone through the Choose to Believe book, I talk about a belief scale where you can measure the strength of a belief. Anything from, I use zero to 100. You can use any kind of number scale that works for you. But if I believe something 0%, that means it's not true whatsoever. I do not believe that I'm on planet Mars right now. So my belief in that statement would be a flat zero. But I do believe I'm on planet Earth. And I believe that's an absolute, so my belief in that is 100%. So that kind of a belief scale can help you determine how strong is your belief in an idea. And one of the things that I taught in that book, in the workshop that went along with it as well, is that if you quiet yourself down and relax and think of a statement such as, Let's, let's just say 2 plus 2 equals 4. Do I believe that 2 plus 2 equals 4? If you are paying close attention to what goes on within, within yourself, you will feel something different with that than you would if you said, do I believe that I am a squirrel? There's a very de definite difference for me. And for me, it's, it's an energy that goes up and down within my torso. If I'm thinking about a concept that I believe is false, I feel the energy down here. But if I believe... Thinking about a concept that I believe is true, that energy goes up here. So for me, my belief scale is an energy flow or an energy presence that travels up and down my torso. So if I believe, do I believe I'm worthy of earning a million dollars a year? OK, that one centers right around here, which is partly between there. So it's not 100%, but my belief on that might be around 70%. 70% of the way from here to here. So that's one of the tools that I teach in how can you determine the strength of your faith in any basic concept. And I've gone way too long on just simply describing that little aspect of it. But at least we're talking about the most important things so I can cut back on some of my other things today. So now that we have that covered, how can we increase our faith in something? How can we improve our prayer power? Because when we're praying for something, let's, let's just say that we are praying for greater financial abundance in our lives. And Hamid Bay suggests that we're praying for ideas. I have seen results where I can, I've seen results just, I want the end result. I want to have more money in my bank account. And if an idea is needed to make that happen, the idea will come through. If there's an idea that someone else needs to have so that they respond in a different way to help make that happen, then the idea will go to them. So that's just one of the little differences between my beliefs and what Hamid Bey writes. But basic idea, going back to what we're talking about. If I wanted to pray for increased financial abundance, that prayer will work a lot better if I believe that that will actually happen. If I pray for something and I'm walking away from that prayer saying, well, that was a waste of time, it's probably not going to happen. So we want to increase our faith that what we are praying for will actually happen. To try to cut this a little bit shorter, <laughs> uh, Choose to Believe book gives you a lot of different methods that you could work on to help increase your faith in a particular idea. What I have found is that our brains associate the idea of truth to an idea. OK. And if we are bringing in the idea of truth within our mind, and we hold that idea of truth, and then we bring in another idea into the, the aura of that truth idea, the two ideas get linked together. And the idea that I talked about most often was a concept from NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, called pacing and leading. And that is a technique where we can bring up our feeling of truth, our feeling of faith. And 
we do that by thinking of things that we know, believe 100%. I know that my name is Alan. I know that I'm standing here in the Coptic Center. I, I know that I live on planet Earth. I know that the sky is blue. And I know that, enter in whatever statement that I want to create more of. I, I know that my financial abundance will increase within the next month. Let's just say that's what we're going for. So by pacing ideas that we know to be absolutely true, and then following that idea with what we want to be true, the belief that we have in the earlier statements gets transferred over to the later statement. One of the other ways of doing this is to daydream. We don't necessarily have to use words. We can use pictures. We can use a complete experiential experience. And we can daydream about something that we know is absolutely true. Like right now, we have, I have the floor down here. I have the chairs. I have all of you sitting in the chairs, I, the walls. It's like all of this is an absolute truth. So if I were to take this image, this experience, the, the cool air from the air conditioner, the sound of the room, everything, if I pull in this whole experience, and I know this is true, and then I insert within this experience an idea of what I would like to be true. Let's say I've got a couple thousand dollars in a wallet that's sitting over in my camera bag right now. If I bring in the idea of what I want to manifest into the idea of what I know to be true, that I'm actually experiencing it, that helps increase our faith in that can actually happen, that can actually be true. Okay. I feel like I'm going around the mulberry bush on this one. Um, one of the other things that I wanted to mention is that our faith is kind of like a, a balloon. At first, it may feel like, well, I can't, can't really get to that point right now. I can't believe that I'm worth a million dollars yet. But maybe I can be worth a little bit more than I'm currently getting. So if as long as we can stretch our belief a little bit and then stay in that place for a little bit and get comfortable with it, then we can stretch it a little bit further and then get comfortable there, then stretch it a little bit further and get comfortable there. It's like a balloon. You try, if you try to blow it all the way up at first, it may pop. But if you blow it up a little bit, let it stretch, then blow it up a little bit more, let it stretch, blow it up a little bit more, it can get a whole lot bigger than if you tried to blow it up all at once. And our faith is a little bit like that. We can stretch it a little bit at a time. And eventually, we will get somewhere that we could not have believed possible when we started. So that is our faith aspect of our formula. Focus. Focus is another very important factor here. And what I am referring to when I talk about focus. I'm not talking about locking yourself up in this intense mental state that grabs hold of an idea and is holding on for dear life. Because you don't have to put a lot of pressure or effort into the prayer process. The only focus we need is to be able to clearly define what it is that we want to manifest as our prayer. Uh, let's, let's get off the financial abundance example right now. Let's, let's talk about health, health and vitality. Let's say that I am not feeling very well and I would like to feel a lot better. I would like to have more energy. I would like to be able to move a little bit easier. In the focus aspect of this, what we have to do is we have to at least imagine the state that we want to have manifest. There's a quote that I go back to every once in a while. Um, Christ in the Bible basically says that whatever you ask for in prayer, if you believe that you have received it, you will receive it. There's a t tense change in there. It, it, it's something that has been expressed many different times, many different ways. You want to focus on your desired objective as if it is currently real as if it is a reality right here, right now, and that we are right in the middle of it. 
So going back to our health example, if I would like to have more energy, then I have to imagine, well, what would that feel like? What would I be able to do with that extra energy that I'm not able to do now? Maybe I'll be able to run up three flights of stairs instead of getting winded after five steps. Maybe I'll be able to go out and play tennis without falling down. Maybe I can do who knows what. But the idea is that in the prayer process, we want to be able to focus on the end objective as if it is currently written. And we want to have as many details in there as possible. And the thing that I have noticed over time is that our brains will pay attention to details when we tell it that the details are important. One of the examples that I've used a few times is when I started getting into digital photography. And I would take pictures with the camera, I'd bring them into the computer, and then I've got the program to edit the, edit the pictures. And in that program, I would zoom in to a very small part of the picture, and I would check the details, and maybe I'd make a little change, and then I'd zoom back out again. Then I'd go to another part of the picture, and I'd zoom into that one, and then I'd check details and do different things with that, and I'd zoom it back out again. And I'd just do that with different pictures throughout let's say, an hour or two of, of editing. I noticed after a couple of weeks of doing this that my visualization started to become much sharper. I was able to see things clearer within my mind, than, clearer than I was able to do before. And I feel like what happened there is I was telling my brain, I really want to notice the details in the pictures, because I was looking at the details. I was zooming in. Let me look at those details. Let me look at these details. Let me look at these details. And then when I went into a visualization, my mind said, OK, you want to see details. I'll show you details. And so my visualizations became a lot sharper. Same thing is true with memory. We tend to remember things that we pay attention to. One of the reasons why I have a hard time remembering names when I first meet <coughs> someone is most of the time, I'm trying to find out who they are. And I'm not really worried about what the name is until I have something to attach the name to. But that's me. Um, quick exercise right now. Everyone, I want you to close your eyes real quick. This is going to illustrate our point as far as we, we notice the details we pay attention to. There are a series of fluorescent lights on the ceiling in this room. Can you, without looking at them, identify how many rows of lights there are between the door and the window? And if anyone can lift a hand and point out the right number, or at least a number you think, okay, I see one correct answer. I see two correct answers. Okay, go ahead and, and look up. You had it, and you had it. OK. That's something I read in a book a long time ago, is that if you really want to train your brain to notice details, pay attention to every detail you can. Things like how many lights are on the ceiling. If you walk up a flight of stairs, how many steps did you step on? That's a way of training your brain to really notice the details. And when you notice those details, when you go into your prayer process, you can bring in a lot more detail, which will help make the prayer that much more effective. So that's all we're going to cover on that one right now, because I really want to get into the third step, which is the feeling aspect of all this. And the feeling aspect is also incredibly important. Because that is doing two things for us. It's connecting us to the divine essence of the universe, especially when we are feeling the emotions, the positive emotions, such as love and gratitude, that Michael Joy read out of Muhammad Bay's lesson tonight. Love and gratitude are two of those very positive emotions that help connect us to the power of the universe, the power of the divine. And when we resonate in harmony, with that divine essence, our prayers become that much more powerful. 
And so that's one aspect of feeling that will improve your prayers. Another aspect is going back into those details that we were just talking about, as far as noticing the details of the thing that you want to manifest. Because not only do you want to see it, not only do you want to hear it, not only do you want to smell and taste it, but you also want to feel it as well. And the example that I've been using lately is if you're wanting to manifest a new car, you want to be able to feel the steering wheel in your hand. You want to be able to feel the vibration of the tires going down the road as you're driving that new car. When you're visualizing the thing that you want, you want to be able to feel it as well as see it. And that goes into adding more detail into that prayer so that you can communicate what you want more clearly to the divine who will then manifest it for you. So these are the three big factors that make prayer work. And the more we can improve our faith, the more that we can improve our focus, the more that we can really get into those positive feelings, not just the love and gratitude that will connect us to the divine, but also the feeling of the thing that we want to manifest. The more we can do all three of these, the stronger our prayers will become. And just like we were talking about before, you can increase a little bit, keep doing a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, and there's no end to how far you can take this. You can even become an infinite creator. Because, in my opinion, that's what we're here to learn how to do. So, I got done a little bit sooner than I thought. And if you would like, we can walk through a little example. So, let's go ahead and do that. And we can shut down lights if, if everyone wants to do that. That seems to make things a little bit better. So, uh, I'm going to walk you through my quick little five-step process for that I've been calling harmonic prayer. The first step is to relax. If you need to stretch, go ahead and stretch. If you need to readjust where your hands and feet are sitting, go ahead and do whatever you need to to relax your body. And taking a deep breath also helps fill the lungs and then slowly release and relax and release the tension in your body, release any cares from the day, release any plans for tomorrow, for now, and just let go of everything. Just center your attention right here, right now. And then as we center our attention within ourselves, we can Strengthen the connection that we have to the divine by indulging in positive emotions. Think of something that makes you feel good. It can be the taste of a delicious dessert. It can be sitting by a fire or on a beach. It can be a warm hug or a caress from a loved one. Whatever makes you feel good, allow yourself to indulge in positive emotions. And notice the feeling that comes up with this. This feeling connects you to the divine. And imagine this feeling getting stronger and stronger, spreading throughout your entire body, touching every cell and nerve within your body until you are tingling with positive emotions. And within this positive space, visualize the thing that you would like to manifest, the thing that you are praying for, and imagine it as if it is a current reality and you are right in the middle of it, right here, right now. Experience every detail of that desired objective. See it. Hear it. Feel it. And if smell and taste are involved, allow those experiences to come in as well. Really get into it. Make it as real as you can 
possibly imagine. Very good. Now, within this space, imagine something or think of something that you know to be an absolute truth. Bring in the power of faith and allow the feeling of faith, the feeling of truth, absolute certainty to spread throughout this visualization, throughout this mental experience. And as you do, the thing that you have been visualizing becomes an absolute fact. And now that we have done that, thank the divine creator within for the manifestation of what you've just asked for. And know that it is done. It may take mere minutes to experience the reality, or it may take a few days, or it may take a little bit longer, it depends. A lot of different variables. But it is a current reality, and the only thing that needs to happen from now is for you to connect with that current reality. And so, in the time between now and then, your task will be to stay open to divine guidance and follow the suggestions you are given that will lead you to whatever you may need to do or anyone you may need to talk to to experience the manifestation of what you've just asked for. And at this point, whenever you're ready, you may Come back to your body here at the cockpit. And you can take a nice deep breath, and that will help wake up your body again. Stretch again and wake up. And I thank you all for being here. If you have any questions on this, you can talk to me at any time. I'll be here and I'm here to serve. Thank you. Okay.